Hello folks, it says we're live. So uh, yeah, hi and welcome to my little loft room. Uh, that's um, my little painting studio and I've not done this for a while. Uh, I'd really kind of miss doing these live streams because I've never felt the connection with you all like I have when I've done a live stream. So thank you very much for uh, joining with us today and yeah, I'm, I'm going to do some painting and uh, have a bit of a chat. Um, I'll just keep chatting to the to the camera as I'm painting. And if you've got any comments or questions or anything like that, then, uh, then yeah, just put them in the chat. I'm going to keep glancing over at it every so often as I'm painting. And uh, yeah, just to see if there's anything that I can respond to, um, anything... Um, that's, I, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to answer questions, um, but I'm sure that you've got like lots of expertise too. So, um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm looking for you to share what you know and uh, what you enjoy and what you experience about painting too. So, so yeah, so hi, hi to, hi to Jenny and hi to Hannah. Um, thank you for saying hello. Um, I'm going to wait a couple of seconds just until a few more people have joined and yeah, and then I'll switch the camera over to the top down one so that uh, you can see what I'm doing. So yeah, so in the meantime, um, do say hello in the chat if you want to, but if you just want to lurk, that's absolutely fine. Um, that's kind of what I do. I'm very shy when I'm joining other people's live streams. So, uh, so yeah, so I do not blame you if you just uh, want to kind of just watch what's going on and, uh, and take it in. So uh, yeah. Um, I, I haven't done one of these in ages because I really enjoyed doing them last year and then I really wanted to get like a consistent season of YouTube videos out and that worked really well in the autumn um, and I didn't include any live streams because I just wanted to see what would happen and to see if I could if I could do it um, and uh, yeah and it worked well and then uh, this year it's been an absolute disaster uh, only because I got ill and I'm just yeah I'm still recovering I'm not on 100% energy yet I'm, I'm still just kind of getting there so I'm kind of easing myself slowly back into it but um, also I knew that I was going to be if I was well enough I'd be away this week so I thought if I did a live stream then uh, then I'd be able to get something out to you uh, this weekend and uh, yeah hopefully hopefully you'll enjoy this um, I'm hoping I'm going to enjoy this too uh, because I've always enjoyed the live streams I've done in the past and uh, yeah and look out for future dates coming up as well so um, hi to Heather as well I see you've just joined um, yeah I'm going to switch to the top down view now and show you what I'm working with and so now here we go you should be able to see my desktop and on here um, I've got just up here there we go there's the reference photo that I'm working from as well and I've put a link to this on my website that should be in the description box if you are following along later and you'd rather have a, a picture you can download there's a, a link to that as well there as well um, the one on the website looks slightly different it's the same photo but it's just the editing slightly different this one I lifted some of the shadows so I could see a bit more of the detail and I'll try and replace the one on the website with this one uh, when I get to it and then here I've got my um, moleskin sketchbook. So this has got watercolor paper in. Um, it's um, it's nice paper. I really like working on it. Um, it's got a little bit of texture to it, but not a huge amount. And um, yeah, I just want to check you can hear me all right. Um, check the microphone's working. Um, yeah, let me know if there's any problems with that as we go along and I will try and fix anything that um, technically goes wrong. Um, I hope it won't. I've got my pencil, just a regular pencil, and I've got this really ugly thing is my kneadable eraser. And it is, um, it's really effective, but it kind of picks up all of the black from the pencil over time and it, uh, it doesn't look the prettiest thing. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of sketching first. I've got waterproof uh, 
pen here. Uh, so these are the ones that I use all the time, these Unipin fine lines. And my 0.4 pen is my current go-to. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad you can hear me. Thank you for letting me know that. Um, but I've got other I've got other sizes as well, but this one's kind of in the middle. Um, so it gives me enough of a line that I can see it. Um, I think the size is just personal preference. I've seen a lot of artists use a lot of finer pens. Some artists use a lot of thicker ones. Um, I think it's just trying a few and seeing what works for you. I've got my little tin of watercolours here. Um, and there's my little colour selection. Now this is a tin that I've made up with uh, colours that I've bought over the years that I think work well together and I made it as a little kind of travel set um, and I will try and remember to tell you which colours I'm using as I go along. And my current two go-to brushes are these Pro Art round, pointed round brushes um, and this is a size 6 and a size 1. Um, I've got some water, paper towel, and I've got a little scrap of watercolour paper here just for testing things out on. So, um, so let's um, move some of these things out of the way a little bit and I can do some sketching. So you may have noticed throughout this series that what I'm doing is uh, I've started with a, a building that was like face on and then I've done a building that's like you can see two sides of it so it's in two point perspective and then this one I've got a little cluster of buildings and I'm doing this one fairly small but um, hopefully you'll get a sense of kind of how to kind of place buildings next to one another um, but it's um, so yeah it's it's not it's not really different from drawing one building, except that, uh, yeah, you're kind of trying to work out the proportions of how they sit next to each other. Um, and the, um, this particular one I chose because this is going around a bend in the river. So it's kind of on a curve. So the buildings aren't just at right angles to one another. Um, they are kind of placed interestingly. So it should give the, it should give the sketch a little bit of dynamism, but, um, the, um, but yeah, the, the process of drawing the buildings is the same as I've been doing in the last few videos. So let's go. So is anybody drawing along with me? Uh, that's, that's always interesting to know. It, are, are people following along at the time or are people kind of watching this to, um, uh, and do you think you'll draw it later or are you kind of using it as inspiration? It, there's no right or wrong answer, so I'm just interested. It might change the uh, the pace that I go at if I if I know people are trying to follow along with me. So, right. So I've got my pencil. I just want to sketch in kind of roughly where the shapes are. So I've got um, this lovely kind of red reddish stone sandstone building to the left and that's kind of going to be about there and then I've got a smaller set of buildings here and you can see I'm really not being careful about the sizes or the scale of these I'm just trying to work out where they sit and then behind that there are two more buildings yeah can you see that sketch not really um, behind that there's this lovely bright yellow one up here like that um, there's a chimney coming out there oh there's that one there there's a chimney there and yeah I think that'll I think that'll about do there's the edge of a building there so I've just put in a few random lines that suggest roughly where the Kind of the big shapes of the building are and then I can go in a little bit more carefully and uh, try and get the the actual shape in what I'm doing now is just putting in some rather, rather sketchy lines for where this kind of these blocks of green foliage are in the river 
there. So we've got that sense of the curve of the river now, hopefully, going around there. And I tend to do this sketching quite loosely to start with, and then I can go and tighten it all up later. Um, but one thing I know that I'm, I'm not particularly good at is just kind of starting drawing at one side and then making it all over to the other and, and, and having everything in proportion. So if I can do these kind of random sketchy um, bits first, then I know better where the, the, all the pieces are going to sit. So I'm hoping that made sense. Can you see the drawing well enough? Um, I can probably change the... So I'm, I'm drawing quite lightly because I want to be able to get rid of all these pencil marks, but I also want to, it to be dark enough for you to actually see what I've drawn here. So I'm going to um, now think about the... There's this kind of red, red sandstone building here, and then there's this lovely kind of honey-coloured building here. And I'm going to focus on those two, because they're the two that I can see the most of. And I'm going to put in a line kind of about halfway up my page, and that's like my eye line. So I'm standing on a bridge taking this picture and kind of looking across the water. And the line here is where I can see... Um, so about up here, I can see that the bottoms of the windows of the house on the right and the, um, the lines on the um, interestingly shaped windows on the building on the left are straight, they're flat, they're kind of horizontal. And that's kind of what I want to line up with this. So I know that I can put in my, like, these are octagonal um, kind of towers here like that and then I know that I need to kind of create curves for the windows that are going above that line. Not very much, just ever so slightly curved. And there's the tower. And then what I can do is I can work out from here If the bits on the building are supposed to be at the same height, then they need to be kind of following a line that goes off down here, and then it's probably going to be like on the page, on the off the page around here somewhere, and like that. So there's like one along the bottom of the building and along this kind of wall here. that two towers are going to come to a point along this line that kind of tapers down to this vanishing point which is over here and this line here is going to kind of come down to a point there something like that. Now these lines only kind of work for this building and on this side of this building because the uh, the other buildings are it, it, they're not at right angles they're not orthogonal to it they're slightly um, yeah, they're at a funny angle, so I'm not going to be able to use these lines for any other building on this uh, in this drawing, but they're going to be very useful for this one. So I can start just blocking in the big shapes. There's the end of the house there. The Actually, the, the point of the gable end comes to there. There's a chimney above it with chimney pots on. And then to make this building kind of look more solid, I can put in the roof lines um, heading off in that direction. And then there's just more foliage there. So that's a little bit more solid. Um, I'm going to go to this one now 
like I said, I'm not going to use these lines for any other buildings, so I can remove them a little bit with my uh, eraser. And then I can do the same thing for this one. So I'm going to start with um, a vertical line that's kind of closest to me, and then I can see really quite clearly two faces of this building. One is going off this way, the horizontal line that I want there is the line of the bottom windows. How many windows are there? Five. The ones a little bit closer to me will be a little bit bigger. The ones further away will be a bit smaller. Five windows there and I can do another five. And then five at the top. There, something like that. And then same on this side, except this one. It's going to be this side of the building is going to be tapering off in this direction. So the horizontal line will still be horizontal. Or the, um, so the horizon line will still be horizontal, but these lines at the um, on this side of the building will be tapering off to a slightly different vanishing point somewhere over here and you've just kind of got to guess where it is you could take out a ruler and measure it but um but yes i'm, I'm gonna guess for this one and then there is my gable end on that one make sure to get a nice angle on the top of the uh the chimney stack as, again and then again, I've got to work out, it's going to practice this line for the top of the roof. And that's going down there somewhere. So I've got these two buildings as sketched in as I'm going to get um, for, this, uh, for this session. Um, and then I can just put in the roof lines of the little buildings behind. And if I need, if it's not clear where they're going to be, I can use my uh, rubber and eraser, sorry. And just try and get those in. Like that. So I hope you can see that for the second kind of pass, I am I'm just being a little bit more careful about where things go. I've kind of roughly kind of done some random scribbles to say, oh yes, I think this one goes here. And to be honest, if you get them in slightly different places, because they're all at slightly different angles, and because it's kind of like a, a nice jumble of buildings, it's not going to be too obvious if they're slightly off. And then, so yeah, this yellow building behind, I can see, I can see this gable end really clearly. And then I can just see the kind of the foreshortened side of it like that. And then out here, I can see the kind of, like a dormer but at this scale I don't want to be putting in too much detail I just want to get roughly the proportions right for these buildings and that I think is my sketch is anybody still following me I feel like that was a bit um, like a bit random, like I was trying to explain things as I was going along and maybe I'm going a little bit too fast. 
uh, if there's anything that I said that you were going, what? I, d I don't understand that, then do put it in the chat and I'll try and kind of go back to it and maybe go back to a little bit more clearly when I'm going in with the pen, which is what I'm going to do now. I think when I keep doing these, I'm going to have to get better at my architectural terms because I can't just keep saying, like, the side of a building. They've all got proper names, I just don't know what they are. And I'm getting better, I'm getting more used to them. Uh, but also, um, yeah, if, if you want to correct my architectural knowledge, then please do, because it's not a strong point. Um, right, let's get some pen line down. So let's start off here. I could start anywhere. Oh, this pen. This pen's not doing very well. I'm going to switch it for a different one. And this one is a little bit thicker. So I've got my chimney in, chimney snack. I think I've made it a bit thin actually, but um, I'm going to live with it. And then, yeah, I think I've got this in slightly the wrong place. And that's the kind of thing I can correct when I've got, when I'm doing my drawing. If I've done my sketch, I can kind of come back in and say, actually, yeah, I think that was that was a bit too far out. Like I can see more of the top of this in my sketch than I can in the actual photo. Um, hopefully, when I get my finished thing done, you won't be able to notice too much. So the tops of these towers um, are slightly, they're, they're like, they've got um, flat faces. So I'm trying to put like straight lines at the bottom that are slightly angled. And then just little sketchy lines to show the edges of those faces. Top of my roof, I'm making a little bit higher. And then down here. And I can start putting in the edges of this tower, the faces of this tower. So again, more little sketchy lines kind of showing where these faces of the tower are. So there's one there and one there. And then this has got like horizontal lines down here in a little kind of cone shape like that. So in here, I'm putting my windows, there's three sets of windows, and I'm doing the ones that I can see most first, and then there's a bit of a gap, and then some plain stonework on this towery bit and then there are also windows here I just can't see them all that well so just a few lines there will show that there's like windows in there but you don't need to put all of the detail in
So I'm not putting in as much detail on this sketch as I would on some of the other drawings I've done recently because I want to get this done in the time of the live stream and not um, and not make it too long. Uh, so I think there are things that I might put in if I was um, if I was kind of taking my time over it that I'm kind of sketching over now and you can probably see that my lines are a little bit more sketchy and loose than um, other times you may have seen me sketching if you've been following this channel for a while um, and that is because um, it's um, normally when I'm filming it's just me on my own and I can take my time and I don't have any kind of time pressures or worries or anything like that and I can spend as long as I like drawing drain pipes and chimney pots and all of those fun things uh, and then speed up the video when I come to edit it but I don't want to do that for the live stream because um, you will all get very bored the recent videos that I've been filming have taken about four or five hours to, to film and then I've edited them down and nobody's got that kind of uh, stamina for a live stream I don't think So for the foliage, um, for all of this beautiful uh, green at the bottom, I'm going to do like the outline with just these wiggly sketchy lines. And because it's, it's green stuff and it grows everywhere, you don't have to be too concerned about getting the shape exactly right. So as long as I get it roughly along here, that's good. So I'm going. I've gone around and kind of put the outside of it in, and then I can add like a few more lines to kind of break it up a little bit. And you can put in things like you can do some different types of lines at different places to make it look like different types of foliage. Like up on the wall, there is something that's a bit more dense and a bit darker. Um, there are some like plants in pots and they might have more like leafy bits on leafy bits you might be able to see the individual leaves a little bit more but yeah just something like that and then that's that side done so hi rich <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, okay, that's that side done. I'm going to start on this one and I'm going to do pretty much the same. I'm going to start at the top, put in the gable end of this building, give the chimney some depth. Chimney stack. Not, um, let's put some pots on there. Can't actually see any on the drawing, but I like chimney pots. I'll put some in anyway. That goes down there. This one goes down here and then it's all just trees and things after that so um, I'll go back in and fill some more of this foliage in a little bit later. But let's get the, the main shape of this in now. So the edge of the roof. Then we go that side. Oh and then there's another little chimney stack there. Um, let's put, oh look, there's a little skylight. Let's put some lines on this roof to indicate like the roof tiles. There we go. And then this line down here. And again, that kind of breaks up because I'm going to put lots of foliage in down there. So, uh -huh. So Rich says, I'd love to know if you've tried or have thoughts on sepia ink or pencil for line and wash. Um, 
I don't know about sepia ink, but the first line and wash paintings I ever did were um, with um, Indian ink and uh, and pen because um, I did them actually as part of a course. I was doing a, a watercolour painting course um, years and years ago, maybe about coming up for 20 years ago. And uh, we did a, we did a week on line and wash just with uh, Indian ink and pen. And I absolutely fell in love with it. And I've, yeah, that that's kind of what got me into it. So, um, yes. Um, so, no, I haven't tried sepia ink, but I, I'd like to. So maybe that's something I need to look out. And uh, pencil. Um, you mean doing the shading in pencil? Um, um, have I done that? Maybe a little bit, but um, it's it's probably something I do more in a sketchbook than uh, than as a kind of finished piece. And I like colour, so um, so yes, yeah, so I like the opportunity to put some put a, like a splash of colour in it. So, um, but anybody else has anybody else used those? And have you got any advice or thoughts for Rich? Uh, put them in the chat if you have. So I'm going to go and add in all of my windows, try and make sure that I get them above one another. And again, smaller on that side and then get slightly bigger as they get towards me. And I should probably be a little bit more careful about the angles of the tops and bottoms of the windows. But again, sketchy. I'm doing sketchy today. I don't think there's much room on these windows to put in details. Occasionally I like to do like the... You know, you can see every pane of the window. I think these ones... I may not get all of that detail in, but I'm putting some dots in them anyway. So, um, this little area of Edinburgh is um, is lovely, and it's actually um, it's one of my common dog walks that I do with my little spaniel. Um, there's a path that runs alongside this river. This river is called the Water of Leith and it runs kind of through Edinburgh in this really deep valley and it's um, it's got some beautiful parts to it and it's a really unusual part of the city because a lot of um, a lot of Edinburgh is very grand and this has a more kind of intimate feel to it. And it, it's called Dean Village. It really does feel like a village. Um, Dean, I think, uh, mean valley. Um, but it's part of the, it was part of the Dean estate, I think. And the, um, because the river is running through this valley, it was a great place for mills. So it was the place in Edinburgh where they had all sorts of different mills. And if you do this walk along the water of Leith, you'll find that loads of the, the areas around there are called something mills. So there's cannon mills and silver mills and powder mills all kind of running alongside this, this river. Um, uh, Dean Village in particular had some, um, had, was known for bakeries. So there's the uh, buildings there that have got um, kind of signs on the uh, on the on the buildings, the old buildings that would have got the uh, the paddles that you would have used to take the bread out of the oven on, um, and uh, and yeah, it, it's a lovely walk and it's a really beautiful part of the city and it is like this is like ten minutes walk away from the end of the castle. Um, So yeah, so if you do ever visit Edinburgh, I do recommend coming to uh, visit here. Although it must be very popular because every time I go past now, there's people taking photos from this bridge. And I'm sure it must be on lots of kind of guides of, you know, the best Instagrammable spots in Edinburgh. I'm getting a bit carried away with trees now. 
Right. Oh, Rich has another question. In your opinion, what are the main reasons why my pen and wash can look cartoony? Oh, I don't know. Um, um, I don't know. Is that your opinion or is that is that something that you've been told about it? Um, I suppose cartoons really are kind of line and wash because that's how originally they were they were drawn they were drawn and inked with lines and colors um and there's absolutely nothing wrong with uh with with that as a style um i think um i don't know it depends what you mean by cartoony um i found that um some of my line and wash paintings can look a little stiff sometimes um, and I, I know that that's that's a stylistic choice occasionally and if you try for a more sketchy look and if you try for a more loose look then you're probably more likely to move away from something that looks cartoony but um, but yeah I think I think that's your choice and it's um, it, it probably comes with uh, with practice experimenting different styles with it but um, but I don't know um, As, is there anybody else who um, has thought um, that there's a similarity between line and wash and cartoon? And um, do you think that's a good thing or not? Um, and do you have any advice for Rich? Right. I must move away from doing the foliage and get those extra buildings in. Let's put in some of the lines for the river um let's see there's lots of kind of weed in the river and that's causing these interesting kind of marks but um, i actually want to get um, more of the kind of so maybe more of the horizontal marks like this To get the sense of the reflections and things in. That maybe looks a little bit more watery. Um, it'll probably be better when I put some put some colour on it. <laughs> right, let's get these buildings in. Come on. This one I was having troubles with the angle. I've tried a few different ways. I'm not quite sure I've got it right, but it's like a ridge of a building peeking over the top, so it's going to be okay. There's just the corner of the building there, just the edge of the roof peeking out. And just one window. Uh, we're going to have some chimneys here. They're really tall. And there is this ye yellow building here. In there. A couple of tiny windows on the end and below it there, and then you can see the the gable sticking out side, if that's what I've decided to call it. And then just this last little one here. Let's 
windows. I think I've, I've lost them in the foliage, but never mind. Got a lovely window on the side there. Maybe a door or something below it. And just a few more little distant windows on this building here. And I think that might be it for the sketch. Hello, hello to Tired Mama from the US. And, um, oh, thank you. Likes the way the drawing's coming along. And um, artist video challenge. She was standing on this spot only a few, few weeks ago. Yeah, it's a good spot, isn't it? So I'm gonna get rid of my pencil. This is where I find out whether I've missed anything. Sometimes I rub it all out and realize I've missed a whole building. There we go. Right. Okay. So let's get some colour on this. Now then, can you see if I put them there? I might need to zoom out a little way. I've got my um, glass of water here. Oh, have I lost a chimney? Oh, I've lost a chimney. Where's my chimney? Um, which one is it? Oh, yes, that one. That one. Thank you. Right, let's get it in. I think I've made it a bit skinny. Never mind. It's there. And yes, there's more buildings behind here and more chimneys. Um, something like that. Thank you for that. So yes. <laughs> okay, right. So I want to do this building here and I'm going to pretty much wash it in in all of one colour. Um, I can start with my brown, so my burnt umber, but it's a bit, it's a bit too brown. It's a bit too, um, kind of, it is a warm brown, but I could do with being a little bit warmer. So yes, it's a nice kind of chestnutty colour and it's not too far off, but I would like it to be a little bit warmer. So I can go into one of my reds, it doesn't really matter which one. I quite like going using a little bit of the um, the permanent rose, so like a pinky red. You could probably not see the difference on there, but yeah, it just kind of makes it just that little bit pinkier. Right, so I'm gonna um, so I'm going to have a look at the whole building and um, quite often I do the, the stonework and the roof um, slightly different tones. What I think I might do for this one, um, the wall at the bottom is like a lighter stone. It's more common, common with these ones, so I might leave that until a bit later or I might kind of wash it into that. The roof has got a, quite a bit of that terracotta -iness in it as well, um, although it, ha it is a lot darker. So what I might do is do the whole thing in this um, kind of pinky brown colour and then just do an extra layer on the roof and maybe add a little bit of shadow in, in a few places as well. Um, and I'm going to try and... Um, what am I going to do with the windows? They've got lovely 
kind of turquoisey um, mullions, I have learned they're called. Um, the wooden bits, all painted lovely turquoise. So I think I want to do something a little bit different for those. And then I can do my chimney pots the same. And then as I get further down, I'm just going to grab a little bit of French ultramarine and just mix a little bit of that in. Oh, and it's already dried. Just so it's a little bit darker in a few of those sections and just see if I can kind of blend that up. And a yes on this wall here, like that. Um, let's go back to my pinky brown and do the side here. And I might just use the side of my brush and swipe it down so I get, actually I didn't get much of a rough edge on there. But yeah, so I've got more of a rough line at the side. And yes, I said I was going to do the roof the same, didn't I? For now, and I will go in, back in and emphasise it a little bit more later on. Okay, so now I've done, I've got like a one wash over this. I'm just going to have a look around and see if there's anything else in the painting that's kind of the same colour. And actually, that tall chimney pretty much is. It's a bit too pink. Um, and I can use this colour for these roofs as well, which have that same kind of pinky tone to them. Um, everything else is more of a of honey colour. So let's um, let's go back to our burnt umber. Oh the little roof in the middle, the little roof in the middle. Um, I'm not sure about the little roof in the middle. Um, I think, yeah, oh, I've still got that colour there. If I, if I spot it, I'll come back to it. Okay. So I'm going to add maybe some quinacridone gold into this because I like it. And let's try that. And I think that's maybe a little too kind of honey sweet. Tiny bit of ultramarine in there just to knock it back a little bit. Oh, I've made it green. Let's go back to the brown. That's a bit better. It's a bit dark if I add more water into it. There, that's going to be a bit better. So yeah, it is a little bit more yellow than my... Um, so yeah. Oh, I want to know what colours in my palette. Oh, I got it, thank you. Um, colours in the palette. I've got um, I've got permanent rose, Windsor red, quinacridone gold, uh, oreolin, which is this kind of nice um, yellowy yellow, <laughs> burnt umber, olive green, uh, buff titanium, sepia, indigo, Windsor blue, which is kind of very similar to like a cerulean blue, but it's kind of even more bright, vibrant, uh, French ultramarine, and Windsor violet. Um, I, I'm not going to use all of these colours today, but uh, but these are the ones that I kind of, I find the most, um, not, not necessarily the most useful, but the ones that help me make interesting mixes. So these are, these are the ones that I kind of chose for this palette, but you could, you could swap out lots of them. Um, so am I happy with that colour?
yeah I think it'll do I think it'll do if you've got something like a raw umber you might not have to do all of this mixing because that might actually just work nicely out of the box yeah um yeah raw umber is nice for this it's kind of it's kind of yellowy goldy but it's not as as bright and vibrant as um um, the quinacridone gold I, I like to use and also the yellow ochre. And just get that in there. And then anything else the same colour? Yeah, these buildings here. Um, this one here. And actually, sometimes if you've got something that is a completely different colour um, in your painting, but it's not like the focus of your painting, you might actually just want to just um, um, do it in in the same colour as something that you're already painting because you want it to kind of blend in rather than stand out. So occasionally you get that with like, you know, <coughs> sorry, you know, you've got like a bright red poster or something. You might just want to kind of, yeah, just ignore it really. Um, so yeah, let's get that one in as well. There we go. And right, um, I want to do the. I want to do the. So I want to do the roofs here, but I want to wait for that to dry because I've just put it down. If I do the roofs, it'll blend. So um, let's go in pretty much straight with some quinacridone gold. Oh, I had some blue on my brush. For that yellow house. When, you, when you've got it um, with lots of uh, pigment in, it tends to look a little bit kind of um, more orangey. When you add more water to it, you get much more of a... A lemony yellow and that's kind of what I want for this. If you put the watery mix on and you decide you want more pigment in it you can always go and add a little bit more later. Add a little bit more there. Now, I want to put the roofs in, but I don't want them to run, so um, I think I might actually do some of the, the river. If you can hear somebody moving around, that's my dog. She's having a little shake. Um, so the river has some, it's got lots and lots of different colours in there. So let's see. Actually, a lot of it is really just like a dark brownie grey. So... Let's go with the burnt umber again. Add French ultramarine into it until I get a cooler colour. And then I can start putting in like the very dark bits at the edge of the river. Like this. And then all I'm going to do is just drag my brush backwards and forwards. I want some highlights in there. And there are areas like where it's kind of caught on some, uh, some weed or something or some rocks where it's a little bit darker in the middle. I'm going to use the brush right on my side, right on its side, and I just get the texture of the paper like this. So the brush is quite dry, and I can just get lots of texture. I do want to add in a reflection of the sky. I'm using some of that Windsor blue, but it's too, it's far too like tropically blue. So I'm adding a bit of French ultramarine into it, and I will. 
add in the odd bit of the reflection of the sky into the water. I have to say water is not one of my strong points. I do like painting it, but it's it's a difficult thing to do well. There are some people who do it really, really well, and I'm very envious, envious of them. And it's something I'm going to practice more. A few more bits of blue. I think that will do. Right, um, I did say I was going to work out what I was going to do with these windows. I think what I am going to do is do those little dots in there with my pen that make it look like I'm seeing into the dark room because I don't want to paint them in all like turquoisey blue because the whole window will just, it'll be too much. Right, so I've got a bit of that in there. And now um, let's use that Windsor Blue and go in and just add some of that colour into these windows. Okay, better. So I've got some blue in there. There's something nice and vibrant in there, but it's not taking over the whole, whole of the painting. Right, um, roofs. Okay, so I've, this mix over here is quite similar to what I want. I want the burnt umber and French ultramarine mix, which I use all the time, which gives me a nice like neutral grey. I can add a little bit more of the blue into it to give me something that's a bit more of a slaty grey, and then I can use that to paint in the rooftops. It's going to be a little dark add a little bit more water in there and if I've decided that is a bit dark I can always just tap on it with my paper towel and lighten it a bit some of these windows need to be a little darker as well rooftop there I think that yeah I think this this yellow is still a bit wet so I think that's maybe going to bleed a little bit green but never mind and then I did say I was going to knock back these uh, rooftops here with this color as well so you get that sense of like there's a little bit of warm terracotta there but it's uh, it's kind of it's tempered a bit. Um, I think these windows need to be a bit darker. And then I'm going to do the foliage and I'm going to do the sky and then I'm going to add some shadows and I think that might be it. So we've got, oh, we're, we're about at an hour so I'm going to I'm going to try and speed through the rest. Um so I've got my yellow here. Add a little bit of the um French ultramarine into it to give me a nice green. And I'm going to roughly paint this on pretty much all over. Now obviously different areas of the foliage are different plants and they're going to be different colors of green. Um, I'm just kind of putting this on quite light, lightly as like a base layer and then I can go in and alter it. So this is mostly yellow and a tiny little bit of blue. I 
can see what would happen if I just drop in some of this blue that's already on my palette. And I'm focusing the, the darker colours more towards the, the bottom where the shadows would be. I'm not entirely sure about that colour. Um, I think the ultramarine maybe makes a better green. So a bit more ultramarine, a little bit stronger, is going to give me a slightly deeper colour. And I can just dance this around throughout this foliage and putting different bits in different areas. More here. Kind of want the dark areas to blend with the river because you get that darkest bit where the you get the shadow of the foliage onto the river and you get the lightest bits kind of on the tops of these kind of bushy bits and then let's do another pass this time even more blue into my green and if your paper if your green is still wet it'll blend nicely uh, if it's dried a little bit then you'll see more of those kind of marks um, so I'll do a bit more dabbing and yeah just kind of create this dark edge near the river Something like that. Right, so I, I need the same kind of blue that I put into the the river. So that was a mix of the Windsor blue and a little bit of the French ultramarine. And let's just see. Are all my rooftops dry? I'm going to turn my page around so I can get kind of quite close there. Just use the edge of my brush to get in kind of close to the edges of these buildings. And then I'm going to Kind of smudge the edge so I've got like that sense of clouds in there. Get a bit more in there. And now I've got that in, I can turn it round and work out how much sky I actually want in here. I can start again at the top. Maybe a bit lighter. Smudge my brush around and create some nice clouds in there. Maybe that needs smudging a bit more. And the clouds in my sky are quite light um, on the photo. You can, if you want to, kind of give your clouds more of a, like a darker, or like a shadow underneath by going in with more of a grey. And you get more of that like little fluffy clouds look. Something like that. I like to clean my brush and just soften the edges a bit. And actually, let's take that out. I think it was maybe better before I put that in, but never mind. Ooh. 
Right, so, um, this is still a little bit damp, but I want to get some shadow in. I can use this bluey grey and mix up a little bit more of it. It's just going to give me a little bit more of a, oops, splashed my brush. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to give myself a little bit more of um, a shadow on some of the sides. Um, I'm just looking at the, at the picture. It was a right, really bright sunny day, but where did the shadows fall? And they fell like on that side of the tower, um, a little bit underneath the tower, um, underneath the roof line there. Um, underneath there and then like on the left hand side of every building so a tiny bit of shadow just on the left hand side of everything so I can put that all over here um, can run some under the ridge lines of any houses chimneys whatever And I can put some like on things in the distance just to kind of knock them back a bit. Um, and then anything else. I'm not sure there's anything else really. Um, I could put in a few little swipes, more of this grey on this building here, just to kind of, um, yeah, some parts of it are kind of greyer than others. Um, a little bit under there, a little bit under there. Yeah, I'm faffing now. Okay. Right. Was there anything else I said I was going to do that I haven't done? I haven't done little bits of foliage in here. Oh no, that's a completely different colour to the rest. And it's a bit darker. I did say it was going to be a different colour though, didn't I? Right. Okay, I think that might be it for now. Um, oh, yeah, thank you. I've got the green on top of the wall at the left. Uh -huh. So, yeah. I could probably spend a lot of time just looking at it and looking for more places that I could add in shadows and just making them a little bit darker. If it's a really sunny day, the difference between the areas with the shadow and the area without the shadow is, um, is stronger. I think there's not much more I can add to this. I think that might be it. So thank you very much for joining uh, with me today. Um, yeah, um, thank you for everyone who's commented, for everyone who's 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 told me I've missed things. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this and enjoyed painting along with me. Um, I'd love to see um, if you have painted along with me or if you're going to follow this at a later date. I'd love to see uh, what you make of this and yeah I'll update the uh, the link to the reference image so that you've got this exact uh, photo to copy from if you want to use it as, as inspiration. Uh, the, uh, the images that I provide are all um, photos that have been taken by me and I provide them for you to use for your own personal use um, but not to share 
or to sell on. So I'm not, not providing things for commercial use, but, uh, but for personal use. So, so yeah, um, thank you for joining. If anyone's got any last questions or anything, I'm going to switch the camera around. And there we go. Oh, I'm just checking there's not a dog behind me before I move the chair. So thank you for, for joining me tonight. Um, well, it's tonight for me. It's It may be the middle of the day for you. Um, I've, uh, I've really enjoyed painting this with you. Um, I hope that you enjoy doing it too, and I hope that you enjoyed watching it. Thank you for all of your comments, um, and thank you for all of your engagement. And yeah, I look forward to, I look forward to seeing another live stream at some point. I uh, hope that you'll join me again and I hope that you'll um, you'll enjoy the content that I'm putting out on the channel at the minute. So yeah, thank you. Um, I've got a video coming up on Tuesday, hopefully Tuesday, which is going to be uh, about my London trip because I had a trip down to London for, uh, for an exhibition. I had a, a watercolour painting in an exhibition. So it's still there, it's up in London. So if you're in the vicinity, you could pop in and see it. It's at the Royal Watercolour Society um, exhibition at Bankside Gallery um, and I'm going to be sharing my little London trip and some of my art adventures, some art shopping and a little bit of a, a London art haul as well. So that's going to be uh, Tuesday's video. And uh, yeah, and then hopefully I'll be back on track uh, after this. Um, hopefully I'll be back to full strength and I'll be able to... Um, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break in March. Uh, and then back in April uh, with some more videos. So um, thank you again, and I will see you uh, in another video at some point. Uh, yeah, so thank you, bye-bye.